Greetings, dear friends. I present to your attention the most common malfunctions and breakdowns that occur on the Nissan Qashqai. At the front, among the main problems is the rapid wear of the struts, their bearings, and the interval ball bushings. The resource of the bow and silent locks of the lever is quite large, for 100,000 for sure. You just need to follow the attachment points on the stretcher. The front hubs are rather weak, but usually the same 100,000 are nursed, and then it depends on the mode of operation and the size of the wheels. The rear suspension is more complicated, and it has an unpleasant feature. It knocks loudly and for no reason. Basically, the problem is associated with the low resource of the silent locks of the wishbones and bushings, but the stabilizers, struts and their bushing make their contribution. Repairing is not that useless, but sooner or later everything starts all over again. Restores from knock to knock from 30 to 60,000 kilometers, depending again on the intensity of driving on the bad roads and the quality of the components used. Shock absorbers to run 150,000 decently get tired, but if you do not demand much from the car, then you can pull with replacement. Steering on the cash key with the simple EUR on the steering column, and the main problems with the car are precisely with cadron backlash and splines. The rake begins to bother the owners after about 200-250,000 mileage, subject to basic car care. But there are enough examples of the opposite, dead tips and rods torn anthers. As a result, the knocks of the rail itself can manifest itself even with runs up to 100. The EUR itself is quite capricious in any case. The PS light on the dashboard lights up for a variety of reasons. How long have you been spinning router? It caught fire. Is the battery hooked up in principle? 2. Did you hit the curb and hold the steering wheel? It's burning. And even with disturbed engine masses, generator failures, rhythmic twitching of the steering wheel to the music. The system doesn't like unusual situations, but I must say that it's configured successfully by the standards of the vegetable crossover. Serious breakdowns are mainly associated with the torque sensor, motor overheating, firmware failure of the EUR control unit, burning of the pad. This rarely happens. When examining it, this worth checking only the quietness of the work and the uniformity of the effort on the go and on the spot. Difficulties in the mechanical part of the drive rarely happen, but nevertheless sometimes the CV joints fail and the spline stick. Relatively often the drive doesn't come out of the box, the retaining ring is damaged or simply has such a design. Pay attention to the corrosion of the tail of the drive in the hub. Open rust often causes big problems when disassembling the unit. The 5-speed gearbox JR5 aka RS5F92R on cars with a 1.6 engine is rather weak. The bearings fly with runs up to 150,000, especially if the box was overloaded with abrupt starts and high-speed trips. The bearings of the output shaft send out especially even their reinforced versions with a steel cage instead of the plastic one. Another problem is oil leaks. When replacing and refilling, it's better to pour more than the nominal value, so there is less chance that you miss too much, and there are no more leaks, as practice shows. Of the specific problems, you can bite the fifth gear when the fork retainer is destroyed. The differential is weak, and only does it collapse with the ball mentioned problems with the bearing races of the secondary shaft, it also cuts off the half shaft splines. The cable drive of the shifting mechanism is quite reliable, it starts to play on runs over 250. The 6 speed box F6 aka RSS6F52A, which was installed with 2.0 engines and diesels, is stronger. It's a pity, but it is also prone to oil leaks. A more serious disadvantage is that this box is only used with a dual mass flywheel. The price of the original part is 900 euros. Under the Luke brand, the same can be bought for 700, but the resource is in any case relatively small. If you use the clunch carelessly and drive at 1500 revolution per minute, then after 60,000 run, the flywheel can start tapping and you will have to change it by the 100,000 run. This box has enough torque reserve for all engines, except for a 2 liter diesel engine. In particular, unfortunate cases, the differential and the output shaft may break. But here it's worth making a reservation that due to the rarity of a 2 liter diesel engine with mechanics and insufficient sample for analysis, it's difficult to reliably say what is the reason. Either huge runs or user errors or still a constructive miscalculation. Finding a diesel with a 6-speed automatic transmission isn't likely to work. But note that the Jetco JF613E is installed there, an extremely reliable unit. Due to some conservatism of the algorithm, the oil contamination rate is low. Before replacing the torque converter lockup lining, you can leave 200,000 or more. True, it's better to change it more often anyway, because the valve body is vulnerable to dirty oil and the cost of the bulkhead and consumables is relatively high. Not as high as in some ZF8HP, but not as low as in the popular DPO-AL4. Most of the automatic Kashki 
come with Jatko JF011E CVT Akanisan RE0F10. This box was installed with a 2.0 gasoline engine before restyling and then with a 1.6 engine. The CVT is strong enough, albeit not as indestructible as the options from Toyota and Honda. The oil pressure in it strongly depends on the state of the oil pump in which the bypass well is wedged. And without oil pressure, the variator dies very quickly. Typical problems with 200 plus runs include replacing the step motor and chain dampers. The chain itself and the cones with careful operation, with clean oil and without overloading, especially with a cold one, they want more than 300,000. But unfortunately, the CVT, as you know, is easier to kill than the classic hydro mechanics, and on the crossover, this all are more likely due to the presence of at least minimal of road ambitions of the driver. Fortunately, there is a CVT Z50 diagnostic software, which even in the free version will allow using a simple ELM327 adapter to clarify the state of the transmission. See the fluid resource meter in it, the state of locking of the gas turbine engine, see the operating pressure in different modes and similar data. The primary and secondary pressure on a heated vibrator in a temperature about 60 degree should not fall below 0.7 MPa when braking by the engine. Also using this program you can slightly crack the strong and dangerous for the variator drop in engine speed at the start and turn off engine braking which leads to the belt intention. The all-wheel drive system is quite strong, although the propeller shaft and clutch with regular off-road exploits may already require attention by 120-150 mileage. They are not designed for high regular loads. Most owners will be fine with 250 plus runs. It is unlikely that it will work to overheat the clutch on Kashki. It doesn't have a temperature sensor, so the brains will turn it off at any long slip of the front axle. The fact that the driver will remain in the front wheel drive car in mud or snow is a completely different story. Weak radiators can be noted as well as quickly hardening plastic and rubber pipes. Hoses, supports and wiring are brought in when they are removed, disconnected or rudely manipulated. The situation is somewhat complicated by the fact that the original parts are sometimes paradoxically expensive. The bulk of Russian cars are variants with very running engines, 1.6 HR16DE and 2.0 MR20DE. They are quite reliable, but there are many nuances. Both engines are four-cylinder with an aluminum block, cast iron liner, simple distributed injection intake has regulators and collectors. The base 1.6 engine is now localized in Toliadi and therefore is well known for all lovers of domestic cars. It is put on Vesta and many other cars of Russian assembly. Nothing bad can be said about it. For its volume, it's quite powerful and high torque. Moreover, it is economical and easy to maintain and repair. Unless it's hard to get close to the candles, the intake interferes. But unfortunately, the piston group is very picky about the choice of oil and the intervals for its replacement. The block is afraid of the slightest overheating. 120 degrees is already critical for it, there may be badges. As a result, there are chances of oil appetite and piston group vary by 100,000. Well, adjustment is sometimes required much earlier than the stated 150,000, but the chain usually serves more than 200. True, if the number on the odometer is less, but the characteristic crankle of an extended chain is hard on a cold one, it's better not to pull and change, it can jump or break. The engine mounts on Nissan are also rather weak. The soft ride airbag brakes and flows in cold weather and during overloads. Whistling and cracking vibrations, low resource of ignition modules, long warm up, and the absence of an oil level sensors. This is all about HR16 DE. With careful maintenance and good oils, clean radiators, and especially on road mileage, you come across cars with over 400,000 runs without piston repairs and an average consumption of 7.5 on a heavy crossover in Moscow. The MR2ODE motor is slightly more sophisticated and more powerful. Structurally, everything seems to be the same, but the cooling system with two circuits, different cylinder head materials, the block design is slightly more successful. The motor is no longer afraid of overheating, but the oil appetite can be easily worked up. The motors have at least three versions of the piston group, before 208 from 208 and 210, and after 2010. The newer it is, the less chances of a fat loss. Late mr 2 ODEs have thicker piston rings and even with a 15,000 km drain interval and using standard oil, there are almost no leaks. The early versions of the engine is also bad in that the cooling system on it with two thermostats, which made it possible to heat the cylinder block itself to 105 degrees without forced circulation of antifreeze. As a result, block cracks, cylinder head cracks and breakdowns of the cylinder head gasket on cars before 2010 are much more common than on later ones. Another surprise is the delicate metal of the cylinder head itself. 
if you twist the candle salt just by eye, you could get a crack without any overheating. With all this, there is especially nothing to break in the motor. If the radiators are intact, the candles were screwed in by a professional, the oil was changed every 10,000 and didn't forget to warm up, then the motor will delight both with thrust and resource of 350 plus. An Enterac Plus, most cars with 2.0 came with the variator, which doesn't allow the motor to be overloaded as much as the manual gearbox. This information about the problems of Nissan Qashqai is exhausted. If you know more or disagree with what you heard, I'm waiting for you in the comments.